Welcome to Behind the Badgers, live on location from Southern California. Brian Mason is with me, I'm Patrick Herb. We are poolside at the Team Hotel, the JW Marriott, four stories above the LA Live complex here, across the street from the Staples Center. We're in the right, heart of the action. Right in the middle of it, yeah, it's a great this place a gr- to be. Yeah, this is a perfect spot for the team to be staying, and we have had a full schedule already, and we got kind of a fun podcast, video cast here. If you're not familiar with Behind the Badgers, it's our weekly podcast that we talk nonsense about Badger sports and try to have guests that might interest Badger fans. JT, Barry Alvarez, Greg Gard, players, coaches, staff members. Today, we got two of the biggest names you can imagine, Chris Orr and Jonathan Taylor, are gonna stop by right here and check out our set. We also had our man Chris Hall catch up with Kirk Herb Street, excuse me, the ESPN talent who's calling this game uh, with Chris Fowler and others. He just did the national semifinal yeah. game last night and then flew in for practice. Rolled into today. LA on very little sleep. So yep. big thanks to him for stopping by our podcast. But let's talk before we get into the interviews, let's do this how we normally do our segments. We start with what's trending in Wisconsin athletics. Number one, let's talk Rose Bowl fun. So there has been a lot on the team's itinerary so far. It's jam-packed. The Rose Bowl is different than other bowls. It is. I mean, bowl games, by their nature, the way these things lay out is you're usually on premises for a week. And there is this mix of football and fun, like you alluded to, that doesn't really exist in a normal game week. And at the Rose Bowl, a lot of that is on steroids. And so from basically the you time... You can't say steroids. In that's true. I can, we can't. We'll avoid that. This is figurative. It's like talking about gambling. We're Fig- not doing that either. Figure of speech. Okay. Uh, but from the time the team hit the ground here, basically it was a Christmas dinner because they traveled on Christmas Day, and then it was right into this you know, nonstop schedule of visit to Disneyland on day one of, of being here. Yeah. <laughs> and you had, uh, some, you had some stereotypes play out. You had offensive linemen getting a uh, roller coaster stuck. Wait a minute. Tyler Wait, Biotish and Cole Van Lannen over at California Adventure, learning that the, the guys who weigh the most probably shouldn't go in the last car. I'm sure Disney's Apparently. happy that we're talking yeah, about that yeah. faux pas. Well, <laughs> there's probably not too many guys that are going to add up to over 600 pounds that are going to combine on a, on a ride like that. So Touché. probably not a usual problem for them. And then you go to events like the Lowry's Beef Bowl, which is something that's been going on tied to this game for, for decades, uh, where the team gets to eat all they can all they can handle in prime rib, cream corn, all the things that Lowry's known for. That used to be a competition, right? Yeah. That they would measure the amount of Yeah, food they don't they don't put numbers on it anymore, unfortunately. Huh. Yeah. That's amazing. Because we'd like we'd like to think the Badgers would fare well in in a competition yeah, like that. Yeah, I would that. think we're good. We, you kind of harken back to Travis Frederick and his epic seven portion trip to the beef bowl a few years ago so getting so always always a highlight for the badgers tonight tonight the team's going to get a special advanced screening of bad boys for life oh. new movie that won't actually hit theaters till january so it's just it's one thing after another for these guys it's a lot of fun and it's it all leads up to pep rally we're going to have right down here at la live tomorrow yeah three o'clock on monday three o'clock pacific time if you're in the area come check it out barry alvarez will be there play the team will be there stopping by paul christ Melvin Gordon's going to come yep. by. Brian Mason got that lined up. Brian was we the Melvin him. whisperer when he was in school. Coming back from Kansas City, the Chargers just wrapped up their season, and Melvin's going to join us. And That's awesome. And some ra- other special guests. we got other special guests. That's going to be a lot of fun. The marching band will perform. Check it out if you're going to be in Los Angeles. So every day they have these things going on, but our trending topic number two is that there's also football happening. So every day that they yes. – have these events they also have practice going on in the morning right it's like yeah. a double header it is a jam it is a jam-packed day for guys and so the team is practicing speaking of the la chargers at the what is called the dignity dignity health sports park which is the home of the los angeles chargers until the new stadium and the la galaxy built. it is the originally We're the la galaxy home exactly so the team heads over to there every day in car in carson puts together a practice um and then the way the week laid out this week they actually ended up with an extra day sort of a bonus day and that was today. So you had your usual Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Today, kind of a bonus day. And then they'll roll into the Thursday walkthrough, Friday practice, and then go time for the Rose Bowl. So they're you, they're they're at the Chargers facility, but they're not using any of the Chargers. No, it's a, items. And so we had yeah. we had we had Wisconsin's equipment director on last week on the podcast to talk about what it takes to move a team across the country right. for a week and have all of their practices because they're trying to replicate. What a normal game week is like right. in Madison. You want to practice as though you were at home. You don't. You don't want to. This is a big game, and you don't want to treat it any differently than you would treat any other game during the course of the year. 
but it's not just what's at the practice site. Right here in the hotel, in right. the ballroom, converted into a honest to God weight room. I mean, Ross Kalaji yesterday sent me a video of John Chanel bench pressing 405 pounds. So it doesn't matter that it's bull prep. The, John the, the, the work continues for these guys. Freak. Right. Definitely. But not only that, they have meeting rooms. So they, right. they like they do at Camp Rano, they break up into team meeting rooms and they watch film. And there's, a, there's an office where they're putting together scouting reports. And there's three photocopiers in there where they're right. printing things yeah. off. I mean, they, they literally recreate their football offices from Madison here and the football practice field from Cam Randall here in, in LA. It's a massive endeavor. It's, it's, it's really interesting how it all comes together and it all, is all part of that mix of fun and football that you know I want to ask Chris Orr about it because he's, he's broken down the huddle at practice the last two days with a message to his guys about have your fun and then when it's time to lock in, that's it. You've had your fun. Right. We're, here, yeah. we're here for one purpose, to As win this game. As the week goes on, their events, their, their, their silliness events kind of diminish. Yeah, there's a cadence to the whole thing, and, and it all boils down to the game. Okay, so on the field, they've been practicing. There's a little bit of newsworthy items, I would say, in terms of sure. the health of the team. Chris Orr, who is going to be joining us in a minute, is healthy after his head injury at the Big Ten Championship Correct. game. Thankfully, yep. he's ready to go right. full speed. Noah Burks, who also had to leave Big Ten Championship game, he's full speed, he'll be, he'll be yeah, back. Yeah, that was a scary injury. I was, yeah. in the moment, I was concerned that and that would be long term. Ended up being pretty minor, and he'll be back for the Rose Bowl. And then sort of the other injury-related piece is that Caden Lyles, who started in place of David Mormon in the championship game, he's got a leg injury, he won't play, so David Mormon's gonna reassume that guard spot that he had filled for most of the back half of the season. Can we go back and wonder if Chris or and Noah Burks play no. the second? No, okay. no, we're done. All right, we're moving on. <laughs> we're moving on. We're, okay. we're at the Rose Bowl. <laughs> so, I wanted to. I wanted, another trend, another topic in football right now is when you get to bowl season. Some people think of it as an exhibition. Sure. This team doesn't treat it that way. They never have. It's Hasn't treated been, any of the games that way. But it, especially not in this game. Sure. Of course. But they're no longer playing for a Big Ten championship, which the games in the regular season move towards that. Correct. And they're not in the semifinals or the championship game. And so when other what was happening sometimes around the league now, the trend or in college football is players skipping the bowl games. Yeah. And if you want to trigger me, use the term meaningless bowl game. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that has become a trigger for me that, well, of course, these guys should skip these exhibition games. Why risk getting hurt? And that's not something you've seen happen with Wisconsin. So I mean, talk, Wisconsin has players who will be drafted in the NFL draft in a few months. Correct. And you've or are, or are mulling a decision like, well, do I go pro? Sure. And none of them, all of them that I've spoken to, not one of them said that it even was a consideration they would make. That I, maybe I, think I don't play. I think of them. Game. I really do. That, that football is important, that their teammates are important. And it's not just a product of the Rose Bowl. You can go back to last year where the Badgers had a, a fairly significant class of draft eligible players and a 7 and 5 regular season playing in the Pinstripe Bowl in the cold in New York City. And all of those guys played that game and no, again none of them had any thought to doing otherwise. So Wednesday's Rose Bowl, Wisconsin against Oregon. A lot of people remember, uh, everybody remembers playing Oregon in the 2012 Rose yeah. Bowl, Russell Wilson at quarterback that year. This is a far different Oregon team than we saw than that Rose Bowl. Yes, although I saw today it came out they're going to wear the chrome helmets again oh, really? in this game. So so it will there will be some similarity to that Oregon you team from they 2012. See our black helmets. <laughs> But it is different. It is a team yep. is a team that looks more like what we expect out of a Wisconsin team. You know, it's a, it's built yeah. around the line play on both sides, built around physicality. Now there is no question there is there is speed, there is talent at the skill positions, and you've got Justin Herbert, an NFL caliber quarterback, running the show on offense. He's but huge. He is a, he's a very large. I yes. Mean, <coughs> Excuse me. Six six two thirty something he, like that. I mean he's he's. He's the tight end. He's a Wisconsin tight end. Somebody said to me that you could you could stand him up next to Isaiah Loudermilk and he would compare favorably in terms Goodness. of build. I mean, he's a big guy. Um, but it, yeah, it, it is an Oregon team that has sort of it's different than the Chip Kelly teams, the one like Wisconsin faced right. in 2012. They were all about speed and spread and all that. And it's it's a team that is going to line up and want to play some physical football, which for Wisconsin, okay, that's something we're used to doing yeah. in the Big Ten. And both sides of the ball too. Like defensively, they've they've yeah. really taken a big step forward and. Not that they were a bad defensive team when they were sprinting out and running wild, but it's a it's a different style of defense now also. And they averaged 15 and a half points allowed per game this season, which is the lowest since 1966. The number that really stood out to me is the fact that they've only allowed four rushing touchdowns all season. 
That's, that's JT might have four in the first half. If things go well, sure. That'd be, that'd be great. We'll they take that. Seen, they haven't seen a Jonathan Taylor. That's what's going on. <laughs> there it is. Okay, the last thing on trending topic number two, the Rose Bowl game. I, I, think a, I think a cool narrative is how the Rose Bowl is, how it's different is that it's, it's bigger in magnitude and it influences future generations. And Wisconsin's got this cool arc happening where we go to Rose Bowls a lot. We're really lucky. And, yeah. and players will cite watching Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl as big part of the sure. reason that Wisconsin got their attention and they came here. In 1994 Rose Bowl, Chris McIntosh, yeah. he was on our podcast a few months this, this ago. This is the, I thought, where, where I thought you were going, yeah. Telling us how he's a Wisconsin kid, but he wasn't thinking about going and playing football at Wisconsin until that season and until that game when he watched him play and he watched uh, Daryl Bevel running around beating UCLA and it highly influenced him to come to Wisconsin. Because that game made a lot of the things that Barry Alvarez was pitching in the recruiting process real. The, so it, then, it, 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 was, it was real. So then Mac plays in it in 99 and 2000, and there's future generations. Yeah, I, just, I talked to Scott Tolzien this week, and I said, did you have any, or not this week, I guess before we left for the trip, but I said, do you have any recollection of those 98, 99 Rose Bowl teams? And he said, oh yeah. He goes, we would go to my grandmother's house every year on January 1st to watch the Rose Bowl. He said, we ran a bowl pool. And he said, the year they played UCLA, everybody in my family said, had UCLA in the pool. <laughs> Except me, I had Wisconsin. He said, so I'm cheering <laughs> for the Badgers. I'm going nuts. And sure enough, Wisconsin wins the game and puts me over the top to win the family bowl pool. So, he, I tell you, we can talk about gambling. I know, and here we and here we are. <laughs> so, and then and then Scott Tolzien plays in right. the Rose Bowl, and then there's future generations, the current guys on the right. team. Chris Orr has talked about watching that game that that he was in against uh, TCU. Right. So then, and guy like Graham Merckx, who's got Big Ten ties, that his dad played football in Minnesota. The Rose Bowl is probably sacred. That might have been part of the reason that he commits to a Wisconsin, or a Caden Johnson, the linebacker from Minnesota that just committed. So when Wisconsin plays on Wednesday in this one, there's probably a kid in the 2027 <laughs> class who will watch this game and go, wow, Wisconsin. Rem remember when Wisconsin played Oregon in the Rose Bowl in 2020? Yeah. Hopefully they win and, it, and we get best recruiting class ever in 2028 sure. and we can do this podcast sure. again in eight years and talk about that. <laughs> Trending topic number three, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the basketball team going to Tennessee this week and, and getting a huge win, a much needed road win. We watched it on TV, we weren't there, but I was fist pumping through the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> I mean, you go into a tough environment, Tennessee, one of the biggest arenas in the country. Yep. And they'd come out- Who'd with, won 33 of the last 34 home games. Right, a team that had, that had been in the top 25 until yep. it recently fell out and you go and you win by 20. A Wisconsin team that hadn't won on the road yet this year and had the, all those crazy home road splits that we've talked right. about on previous episodes of the pod. I mean, what a shot in the arm for those guys. Big time, big time. Right as they're about to jump back into Big Ten play, and they've got one more home game before that. They play Ryder on New Year's Eve, and Ryder people may not even know that's a school, but they're actually around top 100 or so in the RPI or the, the, net. the net and the Ken Palm. So it's a pretty good non-conference game. And then they dive back in and they go to Ohio State, who, oh, by the way, they're number two in the country. Well, you were telling me about, in the wake of beating Tennessee, what that did for Wisconsin's net ranking, that it boosted them. Yeah, now Wisconsin's 29th in the net. Just like that, they're back in what would be at-large territory for the NCAA tournament. Sure. So, so you're above 500, your net ranking's solid and you're going into Big Ten play with a chance to get some marquee wins. And they're getting one of their pieces right again in Demetra Trice. We've now yeah. seen two games in a row. He had 31 at home against Milwaukee, had a big game at Tennessee, shooting the ball well, taking care of the ball. And one thing I thought was really important in that, in that game against Tennessee, the first half, I think he was one for seven with three turnovers. Second half, zero turnovers, finished the game with 21 points. Something like that. That I'm not sure that earlier in the season that would have happened. Sure, he could bounce back like that. On the road in a yeah. tough environment. So this team is maturing before our eyes, I think, and that was a huge resume piece. That's great because everything was before go the new year. Everything was going right for Wisconsin in the first half. No guarantee that Tennessee's not going to make a surge in the second half. You play well. You got a guy you need to play well, playing well down the stretch. That was a positive to see for sure. Let's flip our attention back to football. Our guy Chris Hall was at practice today with the Badgers, and he caught up with Kirk Herbstreet. One of the guys from ESPN who's calling the game, and he tells us there is nothing like the Rose Bowl. Brian, Patrick, thank you so much. The Badgers are getting ready, the Rose Bowl is getting ready, and now the crew that's going to call the game is here to get ready. Thrilled to be joined by Kirk Herbstreet, who just arrived in town, the Rose Bowl. For you, what just makes the Rose Bowl different? 
Yeah, it's everything to me. But, I, you know, I grew up in the Big Ten. My dad played at Ohio State. He was a captain. I don't care what happens with a BCS or a playoff. Rose Bowl, for me, is always special. It's always different. Uh, the San Gabriel Mountains, this is my 13th or 14th Rose Bowl I've called. Um, I love the Big Ten coming in to take on the Pac-12. I love the setting. I think it's the best setting in all of sports, not college football. It's kind of Augusta National kind of feel to it. And then it's just the tradition of it and seeing the, the players come out in the most immaculate field that you'll ever play on and um, seeing who ends up. There's always, there's always great storylines. It's always a competitive game. And let's see who makes a play in the fourth quarter to win it. I know the wheels just kind of hit the ground recently. Yeah. You'll, you'll have to spend the next couple of days getting ready for the game. But generally, what do you expect this game to look like and what may decide who wins? Well, I think with Oregon, you have to appreciate their overall team speed. They have a big, tall quarterback who's potentially a first rounder and Justin Herbert who can throw the ball around. I've called a few of their games this year. Uh, they've got some dynamic playmakers around him. Wisconsin fans will love this. this. This could arguably be the best offensive line in the country. Four seniors from the left guard over to the right tackle, and the left tackle's one of the best linemen in the country this year. So uh, it'll be a great challenge for Wisconsin up front. I've called Wisconsin this year as well. I'll tell you what's blown me away is what Jimmy Leonard's done with that defense. The defensive front's starting to become playmakers. They used to just kind of eat up space and let the backers make plays, but now they're starting to be creative and, and doing a good job of getting into the backfield. So that matchup with the way Orr comes downfield and Sanborn comes downfield um, into, the, into the offensive line, it's a great collision. Um, so I'm excited to watch that. And then on the other side, it's always with what Wisconsin's been able to do offensively with Jonathan Taylor over the years has been great. But I think in this game, they're going to have to be able to throw the ball. If there's one way you want to attack Oregon, it's trying to get the ball spread out and make some plays downfield. Well, it'll be here before we know it. By then, you'll be rested up and ready to go. Thanks so much for oh, taking yeah. a minute. Anytime. I appreciate you joining us. Kirk Herbstreit getting some rest, hopefully after being here at Badgers practice. Brian and Patrick, back to you guys. Thanks, Chris. Back here poolside in Southern California. We're with two guests that need no introduction. The co-MVPs of this year's team, Chris Orr, Jonathan Taylor. You guys could get used to this Southern California living, you think? For sure, without a doubt. Play for the Rams or yeah, Chargers yeah. someday? This, this is great weather. I love to live out here. All right, so what's the highlight of your week been so far? We've been out here a few days, and there's a lot of non-football stuff going on. What's the highlight for you, Chris? Uh, mine will either be... Um, just going to Disneyland, you know, and being in that environment, or you know, getting the first cut at Larry's Beef Bowl. You know, that, was, that was actually special. You've been to Disneyland me. before? No, never. Disney World? Never. Okay. Mm -mm, at least not that I can remember. Favorite ride then that you got to do? I don't like rides, but <laughs> my favorite might have been uh, what was that? The Star Wars ride. Yeah, we got yeah, on. The yeah, Star we got Wars Star Wars. Ride. Ride. All right, what's your highlight of the week? The Star Wars ride. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it was really nice. It, you it actually fun. felt like you were controlling the ship, so yeah. I really enjoyed that ride. So how do you, on a, on a trip like this with so many events going on off the field, how do you guys balance the fun and the football? I mean, I think it's just, you know, exactly what Coach Chris preached. Um, when, you're, when you're doing an event, you know, you're, you're fully locked into that event, you're fully engaged in that event. And when it's time to practice, you know, you're fully locked on football, fully locked in practicing, meetings, whatever the case is. You know, you just be 100% in that, in that place that your feet are. But this is your fifth bowl. But not everybody's been through as many bowls like this, and the Rose Bowl is yeah. different. You have to talk to some of your teammates about, hey, pace yourself. I mean, you just tell them, um, you know, like before we left, you know, the, the earlier days is where you probably have the most fun off the field. But um, you still tell them the same thing, you know, lock in when it's time to lock in. Yeah, and that seems, that's been your message right. after practice the last mm -hmm. couple of days. Exactly. You, uh, you got a history with the Rose Bowl? Did you watch it growing up? I mean, it's different than other yeah, bowls, isn't it? it? Yeah, I watched it a lot. My probably... My favorite bowl, Rose Bowl game would be uh, Texas and USC. I watched that game completely through in 2005 for the national championship. That was, that was like a, a, an amazing game. It was a special game to me. Okay, I thought you were going to say Wisconsin TCU. <laughs> no, nah, I don't watch that. No, I didn't watch that. Nah. <laughs> Well, you you got you watch the Rose Bowl growing up. Were you were you a football fan growing up? Yeah, I definitely was. Uh, you know, one of the more, most recent memories is Christian McCaffrey in the Rose Bowl. Oh. I mean, you know, exploding for an explosive play, <laughs> the first snap. So I mean, I think that's just something that you look at when you're growing up. And you're like, man, this is one of the biggest bowl games you can go to. And yeah. you know, from snap one, he's already making plays. So I think it was that was just one of my closest memories. So you've watched it on TV. Being here now, has the gravity of what this game is, has it set in yet? Or was there a moment where you realized right. what this was all about? 
Um, a little bit, definitely a little bit. Um, especially speaking to the, like the president of the Tournament of Roses. You know, you see how many people are involved in this bowl game. Um, that's when it kind of hits you a little bit. But, you know, for me, outside of that, not really. You know, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's just football. You know, that's, that's pretty much me with any and every game, no matter where we play at. You know, at the end of the day, it's just football. It's trying not to make it bigger. Yeah, than exactly. It's still yeah. a football game. This has been a ridiculous month for both of you guys. Mm -hmm. JT, you won the Dog Walker for the mm -hmm. second straight year. Yeah. I mean, that's silly. What was it? What was that trip like? Doing it again? You've already been to the College Football Award Show, and then okay. you get to do it again. Uh, really, I think the trip is just about making connections and the experience. Now, when I went down there, it was all about connecting with the guys from around the country. I'm a college football fan, so you you watch these guys on TV, and now you get a chance to meet them in person. You get to see how you know how much bigger guys are around the country, and and I think it's just a special event, and it's a time where you can definitely build connections. What about connecting with Herschel Walker? Oh, uh, that's awesome. I mean, he's one of the all-time greats, one of the uh, baddest dudes to ever run the ball. So it was an honor. You think he could keep up with you today? I think I, he could. I think he could. He definitely looks like he's in shape. <laughs> what was his regimen? He, he used to do like like a thousand push like a thousand push ups, two thousand sit ups, yeah. race a train. <laughs> and he looks like it. Yeah, he looks he like he does. Some crazy yeah. stuff. Chris, anything happen to you this month? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> I got my masters. You know, got engaged. It's been a it's been a, it. a big That's month it. for me. Yeah, big no. month. Big so, month. Solemn, solemn month. Solid yeah. month. <laughs> <laughs> solid month. Tell us about the engagement. Uh, yeah. People must say, like, so how'd you do it? I mean, so I tried to trick her by saying, like, <laughs> let's go on a nice date. Like, we haven't been on a nice date in a while. I was going to take her to a steakhouse right on the square. to rare, actually. Yeah. And she wasn't hungry. So I was like, ah, oh, man. So then I tricked her into saying, let's, well, let's go take a picture by the Capitol. Like, let's put some nice clothes on or semi-nice and let's go Plan take a B. picture by the Capitol. Uh, so we walked around the Capitol a little bit, and I had uh, Zach and his girlfriend planted somewhere because she's a photographer, and they took pictures when I popped the question. So this, it was planned out. It was definitely planned. Now I've seen the pictures. Yeah, there was, a, nice. there was a game plan behind it. Any hesitation, or was she was all in? Oh, no, she was all in. She was all in, <laughs> yeah, just crying and stuff. So, so you, feel, you felt good moment. going in? Yeah, yeah, I definitely felt good going in. Yeah, I felt good. All right, good let's talk plan. a little football. <laughs> let's talk some football. First of all, before we get to the game, I want to ask you both, What's your relationship with Coach Chris? I because, think I was just because I ask it because I think the public perception we see a lot is game day Paul Chris and new press conference Paul Chris. Mm -hmm. But you guys know him differently than that, I assume. Right. He really he's the same guy on and off on and off the TV. I mean, he's the kind of guy where he likes to keep things simple. He wants to talk about life. He doesn't want to really want to talk about football when it's not time for football because, you know, you have enough time to do that. You have plenty of time to engage in football activities, to sharpen your skills, gain an edge. When he talks to you off the field, it's, you know, how's, how's life? How's your family? He, he remembers details that you forgot that you told him, but he remembers. <laughs> and I think that's the most crazy thing about it. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Um, he's truly a player's coach. I hear people say that all the time, but he truly is. Um, just the fact that, like what JT just said, you know, he'll ask you about stuff that you might have told him months ago that you didn't even think you ever told him. You know, he's still checking up on you. He cares about who you are, you the person more so than you the player. And you, you couldn't ask for anything better than that in a coach. You still remember getting recruited by him? Oh, yeah, yeah, I definitely still remember that. Um, so I was committed under Coach Anderson, actually. And then Coach Chris came in and oh, yeah, he did the in-home visit. Yeah, yeah, he re-recruited me. He did the in-home visit. He came to my high school. Then that night he stayed at my house and we uh, ate dinner together, him and Coach Rudolph. Him, Coach Rudolph, and my dad, you know, they were just talking about all these different run schemes that my dad used to run in, in Washington under Coach Gibbs. So it, it, it felt comfortable to me. You know, he felt like one of my uncles. So I, I definitely, <laughs> definitely felt comfortable coming here. All right, so you've, Chris, you've talked this week about how there's there's one purpose to this trip, mm -hmm. to, to win this game. What what challenge does Oregon present for both of you guys I on mean, different sides of the ball? Offensively, they uh, definitely have a really good quarterback. You know, he makes smart decisions. Um, he doesn't get careless with the ball, and he has a strong enough arm to fit the ball into tight windows, you know, and make pretty much every throw on the field. Um, he's elusive and athletic enough to, to hurt you a little bit. You know, he's not like a dynamic runner. But he can he can get it on third and eight or whatever the case is he can go get the first. Um, they're running back. Um, he's he's pretty talented. He runs north south, has good breakaway speed, and their and their offensive line is big and athletic. So they're they're definitely you know challenging. And they also have some athletes on the outside too. Yeah, I think you know just going off of the athlete part. Really, they do a good job of using their hands. They they like to play with extension. So we got to make sure we do a good job of using our technique. We got to play with great technique versus these guys because if you you have great hands. 
plus you're athletic and you know have speed like Oregon. Oregon's defense can run sideline to sideline and cover a lot of ground. It's going to be pretty tough to to win. So you got to make sure that you're using great technique. Do they remind you of any team you've played this year? I think it's a, I think it's a mixture just because you know oh, at Ohio State they had a lot of speed on defense and then you look at, at Purdue's linebackers they were really good with their hands they were able to get off blocks so I think it's you know it's kind of just a mixture of, of, of teams that we've played throughout the year. Yeah. Well, Big Ten's had a pretty good bowl season so far. Ohio State lost, but Iowa put up points, Penn State put up points, Michigan State's got a win. I bet you guys aren't surprised to see the Big Ten is flexing its muscles. Oh, not at all. You know, it's, it's the best conference in the nation, without a doubt. Um, we play the best football consistently, you know, across the board. So it, it wasn't surprising me at all. I was rooting for all of them. You know, I wanted all of them. I want Big Ten to shine. <laughs> so representing the Big Ten, representing mm -hmm. Wisconsin in this game, what would it mean to win the Rose Bowl? Everything. It would mean everything. You know, this year was a 25-year reunion of the 1994 champions. You know, to see all these guys in 25 years and talk about them and, and reminisce on the time that we became champions in the Rose Bowl, you know, it mean everything. You know, the last taste we have in our mouth is sour, bitter, and disgusting. And we, we want to finish this with a, with a sweet taste. Yeah, it would definitely mean a lot. I mean, we have a chance to etch our name and a, and a place in history of Wisconsin football. And, and that's what you think about when you come here. You think about, you know, winning the West, you think about going to the Big Ten Championship, and you also think about getting the opportunity to play in a Rose Bowl and become a Rose Bowl champion. On the facade of Camp Randall, mm -hmm. they got Big Ten titles and they got Rose Bowls on there. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to be a Rose Bowl champ, I bet. That, oh, yeah, they, for they'll sure. put it up there anyway. They'll be, be 2020 up there regardless, but Big Ten champs got a little, or Rose Bowl champs got a little different ring to it, huh? Oh, yeah, way better ring. <laughs> All right, guys, appreciate it. Thanks for doing this. I know you got a busy schedule this week, but good luck in the game. Remember, if you are in Los Angeles, the pep rally is on Monday at 3 p.m. at LA Live. Right down there, actually, we're right, we're overlooking LA Live right here. Remember that. And then we'll see you at the game if you're out here. If you can't be out here, watch it on TV. Four o'clock on Wednesday on ESPN. We'll see you on the championship podium. Unless we get fired. <laughs>